Good morning, everyone. And when you're listening to this, it will be evening. This is Victoria from Women's Issues, Women's Voices. And you are joining me in my Zoom studio for another episode of the Story Hour. And today I am interviewing Trisha Woolbright. She's going to be offering a story about her personal experience, her personal journey around health and healing. Trisha, hello. Hello, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so Trisha, for the listeners, you, um, well, you're, you're a Colombian, but you actually don't live in Columbia property. You live out proper. You live out in some beautiful property, as I'm understanding. Full yeah, of I'm wildness. kind of in between two houses right now. Yeah, I'm building houses. Yeah. Oh, right. And you're building um, straw bale? Yeah, or, and yeah. buildings and off-grid electricity and off-grid water. Yeah, you're doing so many neat, interesting things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we I were trying to figure out how we know each other, and we've decided that it was like no one particular point in time. It was yeah. literally like this person said and then you showed up and then that you know, we back and forth like we are like so many Colombians we're just part of the web yeah yeah yeah, yeah. is there anything that you I'm want so to share to meet you. what what would you say I'm so glad I, I'm so glad I got to meet you <laughs> yeah I you're um you know you're one of those folks I feel like I'll I'll be like I'm surprised I know your last name, because there were a long number of years where I would say you know you know my friend Trisha I don't know her last name I don't know what she does <laughs> but but we've 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 exchanged plants right you know and it's like yeah. knowing people for who they are rather than like what they do or but then Facebook came along and now you know people by their Facebook names. Yeah, there are yeah. People whose names I don't actually know. I only know them through face. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so someone shared with me that you have been playing with this becoming a storyteller. Like yeah. That, that you like telling stories, but you also are still in learning how to tell a story. Yeah. And that yeah. really excited me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, because like as I told you, I feel like I started this project and I'm being invited to think differently about what it means to tell a story. It's not always once upon a time and then da 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 and then da 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 and then it all wraps up in a happy ever after the end. That's not the way stories oh, go. No, yeah. 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 yeah, it's very organic and um, I do like to try and make a point to the story, though. I I, I don't want to ramble on some, you know, self-serving di mm. dialogue. Um, I I want it to have a point or a purpose, and so that was a really good challenge for me in this. I really thank you for that. That, was, okay. that helped a lot. So, so do you want to wait until after to to talk about? what you what for you the point of the story or do you want to just oh you'll hear it okay we'll it's hear. in there although yeah. I have had experiences where I've gone to like art performance you know uh, a theater performances and I thought the point was one thing and then I talked to the person who wrote the play and their point was something different so that's one of the wonderful oh. things about stories yeah yeah it, it can mean yeah. what it means to you too that's that's lovely I love yeah. that too yeah so um the, the working title that you're, yeah. you're using right now is My Health Journey. Is that, am I, did I hear yeah. that correctly? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, so listeners, I'm going to invite you to let yourselves, wherever you are, even if you're driving the car, you know, take a deep breath, let yourself let it out, let go of thinking about grocery lists or doctor's appointments or the argument you had with somebody earlier in the day or whatever might be filling up your mind and just see if you can let yourself just 
listen to Trisha's story and see if anything about it feels really valuable for you. So I'm going to okay. hand it over to you, Trisha, and I will be your, I'll be your audience. Oh, thank you so much. This is really great. Okay, well, I just want to say I love eating sugar. Mm. I love bread. <laughs> I love ice cream and I love pasta and I could just keep going. I love it so much, but I really, it really did not love me. And I thought I can do whatever I want. It's fine. And then I had chronic headaches and body pain and hormone fluctuations and problems with my menstruation and skin problems, tension, inflammation, and more. I just didn't know it was anything at all connected, much less to my food. I didn't think any of those things were connected. Mm -hmm. And even when I started growing food and teaching growing food, at least at first I was still addicted to soda. And for years I was eating all the things I want and I had a predominance of vegetables still. I still didn't connect my body to what I was eating and how I was spending my time and my life. I was overworked and I was also in pain and anguish and barely struggling to get by. Mm -hmm. But I also kept it hidden a lot. You really just learn to deal. I meet a lot of women, all ages, suffering from the same symptoms I was, and sometimes it's a whole variety of reasons, but they too are trying to CSI the pain and figure out what's coming. <laughs> what can I do different? Guess I'll just live with it. Some things must be endured and cannot be solved for sure. Mm. Some things can be helped, but not cured too. And some things do have a root cause and something as simple as your food. But I know most women do not have the time, the access, or the privilege to knowing how or, and even getting the help and the foods that they need or the medical care. I wanted to tell a story about my success, my success in finding good health, for sure. But it was also, it also should be everyone's story. I was given opportunities and privilege not enough people have. I finally got a bit of insurance. It took a while. And I had a doctor tell me about PMDD and that she thought I had it. She gave me an SSRI. And I thought I didn't really feel ready for that or understand. I mean, I, what do these letters even mean? So I said, I'm going to research first. And I found scientific journals and forums and read lots of different ideas, but mostly about the suicide of women with this disorder because it comes with suicidal ideation. Yeah. PMDD is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. It is roughly 15 days of pretty decent feeling and not a lot of pain or problems, but some, and 15 days of awful mood swings, rage, mental health problems, and brain fog and more. And it also is accompanied by pain. I would have 40 symptoms and would journal about it. I started tracking in an app. There was a menstruation app on my phone that I could put my notes in and track my moods with. I could see a pattern emerge because I had a smartphone. In one of the forums, they talked about a low carb diet. I talked to another friend with PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, and how she had found some relief for pain and problems with a low carb diet. I was really hesitant to do this, so I didn't for a long while. How can I not eat and then list a million things I love that were my staple foods? Then fell and I hurt my back. I was going through chiropractic and yoga and trying float tanks and more to get better faster because my job required it of me. I can work in pain. I always have, but I can't work if I can't walk. That was my attitude then anyway, and I do not believe anyone should have to work in the pain I was enduring to the extent I was. Finally, about three or four months into research and still not fi finding solutions, I decided to try it. I just dipped my toes in and I tried a bit. I still allowed some things. I still, I tried to taper off a few things. I'd lie to my app. <laughs> I was, it was so not successful for a really long while. I learned about some more apps for tracking, tracking my food. And wow, did I resist that. It was horrible. The times when I was hungry and I had to track just to see what I was allowed to eat that day would make me rage. I just felt like I was in withdrawal, which I now know I probably was. 
I was struggling so hard. It took me a while to get the hang of it. And I was afraid to eat out, especially. Mm-hmm. By a few weeks of really doing it finally, and I say weeks, but it was probably months. <laughs> and <laughs> I started not only feeling a bit better, but so much better, I was feeling a bit surreal about it. I was not aware of how much pain and anguish I really mm-hmm. was in. It wasn't there. It was just so bad. And then it was almost gone. Most days nearly gone. A year or two of doing 20 carbs a day, which is very little fruit and vegetables too, but a lot of greens, a lot of fat, and a lot of meat. I felt like not everything was 100%, but I might mention that this diet is not cheap. Mm -hmm. I had to sacrifice other things in life to eat this kind of way. I also don't have children. My partner has discovered that low sugar diet helped him and his health issues too. Having a different diet than the people you live with can get expensive but so can meat and fat. Carbs are cheap and filling. It's difficult to eat the way I did. And the motivation is even harder in this world. And it's so expensive. I just really had a hard time with that. I talked to my doctor about my menstruation problems again. And she sent me to an OBGYN who gave me an IUD Mirena, which is a hormonal birth control. But as with most insurance, you're never sure how much you're going to be paying for this medical care till the end. In the end, they probably got about $2,000 for this thing. Mm. And the STD test for it alone was over $100, which I found to be absurd. This is a test the health department performs yearly, and they had to charge this much for it. It had to be through this system. There was no way to check the cost before I started this. I did try very hard to do so. We had to go in blindly and hope this worked and hoped we had savings for it. I had to sacrifice so much. But even given the privilege to do that was special. Many women, it doesn't work, but it's still a gamble. This IUD did help me though in so many ways. All of my 40 symptoms went away. If I combined it with a low carb diet, but not totally keto, I'm basically just not having sugar and flour. I seem to do pretty good with foreign products like chips and tortillas now, but I can't have potatoes. I have side effects. Mm -hmm. Throughout this four-year journey to my health, I also joined a co-counseling class. This is a limited kind of class that doesn't come often, and I was hesitant at first. But I decided some talking is better than none, and without enough money or for therapists, I should try it. Mm -hmm. Reflective counseling or co-counseling is where you have a shared reflective counseling time with another person. Both of you have been through a training to learn the structure and ways to do this with each other, and it's confidential. You trade some time, essentially. So maybe I talk and work on my issues, attempting to reflect and, quote, discharge emotional trauma I originally had for like 20 minutes. And then the other person does it for 20 minutes and I help them. So that's the short of it. I noticed it's a predominantly white and limited group in town, and it's been hard to help grow this here and be available as a technique for more people. I regularly counsel with three people now every week or every other week. Another thing I would attempt is yoga. I was really put off by yoga classes that cost too much, and I had to look a certain way or be a certain way in them. I was intimidated and sometimes shamed in these classes for my abilities or my body size. I felt like I didn't like it. Then the Unitarian Church offered me a free yoga class, and I met Karen Dwyer, who Mm -hmm. who really just changed my whole body and mind around yoga entirely. I adore her for it and thank her immensely for helping me and so many others access yoga. She accepts donations, but I just can't thank her enough. I do it regularly at home now, and I hear her voice saying, listen to your body over and over now in my head. But this quote, listen to your body was just like a phrase. I didn't know what it meant. I'm a busy, chatty, constantly moving person who is definitely not living in my body much. It hurt. Was con- I wasn't connecting to it at all. So much pain. So I started doing sensory deprivation float tanks in other mm. towns. And when one moved here and then another, I ended up with a membership somehow, finally, at Clarity Float Spa. Floats were expensive. No one had heard of them in the first place and were hard to come by. But I knew it was the key to listening, like really listening. And I originally went to it for pain, not for meditation. I hoped it would calm my full body tension and pain, which it really did. But I was also able to work things out. This isn't a tool available to everyone yet. And again, it's just one tool I was using. So now I'm in better shape than I've ever been in my life. I don't have a goal weight 
My body stays the same weight all the time. It's fine with me. I think how I look is not about my weight or size, but how I hold myself, how I feel, and I feel better. During COVID, I had a lot of life-changing tragedy and problems, and it was the most devastating year of my adult life. I won't go into it, but we've all lost a lot and did it a lot alone. My connections to friends sustained me, even if it was on the phone and internet and distanced. The beginning of 2021 led me to breaking my foot and losing my family dog all at once. And coming out of that, I heard my body again by seeing my behavior around me. Through co-counseling and floating and reaching out to others, I braved taking that SSRI, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor finally, and help with getting out of this very dark place that 2020 left me in. I'm still on my journey, but I know finding these solutions took opportunity, insight, time, testing, with all the privilege coded in everything. I did not achieve eating sugar, not eating sugar alone. My partner, my friends, and my resources have helped me. I did not achieve getting the medical care without the insurance. And if we had universal health care, so many women could find the solutions they need and direct their health. My pain and my suffering directly affected the people around me and my job and my life. I suffered a lot through those years, and I have, I have best friends still fighting for help and answers, too. They suffer daily from common things that are debilitating, should not be this common. It should not be so accepted that women hurt and suffer this way. But the research is slow and the access to care is just not there. I hesitated to tell my story because I always think while I find health, it was just luck and a mix of hard work, but I was not alone and it's not the answer for everyone. But if you take anything away, it's that we need to make it possible for women to have the resource and the time and the ability to listen and access the care they need to feel good and to be heard. By doing that, we help the whole world. With my body, I feel good now and I want to give more and I do. I'm able now and I want others to have that same ability. That's it. Oh my, yes. <sighs> I'm would like listeners to just take a moment to take a breath so much so many resources right you mentioned a lot of different things and folks if you're hearing this in anything that trisha mentioned you want to know more about you can contact me at w-i-w-v at kopn.org put in the subject line, you know, for Victoria, and then just say, hey, Trisha mentioned Clarity Float Spa. How do I find out more? Or Trisha mentioned, you know, a revised keto diet. How do I find out more? Or simply like, can I connect with Trisha about this co-counseling thing? Oh, yes. Right? Right. Anything that you heard in there, I don't know what might have resonated for you. What resonated for me is that I am feeling in my body a mixture of horror and gratitude that when I started this project, I did not realize how many women have my story. Yeah. And, and I could tell a similar story over the last 10 years. Yeah. And, um, so that's for another time. Um, Trisha, I would love to have you back for a whole episode if you are interested, to, so you could talk about each of those things in a little more depth. Well, or I'd if love there's to. like if there's any one part of it you'd really like to talk about, and have other women, like maybe some of your other co-counseling folks, right? Like, yeah. just let me know, and we'll we'll set up a time for that. Nice. <sighs> yes, Ooh. thank you so much. Um, I'm so glad that you have had. Uh, the the strength and the bravery to work through your process to be able to tell that story because I think that's part of how we like tell you're not telling the story like here's what I did and you can't like and you know it's not accessible to you but let's find out ways to make these pieces more accessible and you talk yeah. about it is one of those ways right thank you well, so thank you so much. So I'm going to wrap up. Is there anything else you want to just finally say about this experience? Oh, I'm just so glad that 
you're giving the ability for women to share their voices in, in this mm -hmm. format. And um, I've gotten a lot out of KOPN and the, and the stories that I've heard on it that have changed my life and given me resources. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm just glad to get to be part of that. <laughs> and we'll have a pledge drive coming up next week after the show is aired. So please take the time oh, to yeah. pledge. Any, any amount that you offer is welcome to support community radio. And thank Wonderful. you, Trisha, for your, all your community support. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, thanks.